And in today's video, we're going to show you all about how to use the group connector inside of Power Apps to limit what a user can see based on their rights. So stay tuned. Have you ever wanted to limit the functionality of the application with Power Apps based on the groups that a user is in? Well, if so, this video is for you. In today's video, we're going to focus just on that, using the groups connector to accomplish that, that single focus, limiting the functionality of a button based on that. So to do this, I'll go ahead and uh, have a simple application open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all create the group connector. So I'll do that under the data ribbon on the left side. All right, right here on the left side. I'll go ahead and add a new connector. I'll, call it, I'll look for groups connector. And there is Office 365 groups. And it has a quite a bit of functionality. It's very similar to the Office 365 users uh, one. So when I select it, I'll click on it again. And now I have all the functionality of that Office 365 directory. Now, a few things to note there. One thing you may want to grab is uh, go over to portal.azure.com. Go ahead and sign in and look for the groups that you want to identify and add users to. So I'll go ahead and auth authenticate in. And you also, so if I go over to my Azure Active Directory, I'll then go to Groups. And the one I'm going to pick on today is the Consumer Group, uh, Power BI. There we go, Power BI Consumer right here. So if you're part of this group, then I want to show a button. And if you're not, I want to hide the button or disable the button in some way. A few things that might be interesting to you later, that ID right here, you might need for some of the pieces in this connector as you get deeper into it. So what I want to do, because the object ID cannot be faked, this course can be faked and could cause problems down the road. So if somebody creates a, a group similar to that, you may want to avoid that. So I'm going to go over back over to Power Apps, and I'll show you a few things you can do with this connector first of all. But first of all, I'll go ahead and drop in, um, I'll drop in a gallery. There we go. And I'll just drop in just a, a quick gallery right here. I'll make this just a quick title one. I'll move it over here so you guys can see it. There we go. All right, and let me make sure I bring this forward also. Okay, cool. All right, so now, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and type in um, oop, groups here. We'll see the Office 365 groups. We, um, we can use things like list members to, to see all the members of a certain group, and you can use that. I'm gonna use the V3 version of list own groups. The, free, the V3 version of it will show you groups that you're a part of and ones that you're the owner of. So it's not just a change of behavior in V3 to include both of those. Now I just need my email address. Now my email address can be like a, oh, actually I don't even need to do that, just this one. I said dot, and if I hit dot, I can say just show me the values of that. Now you'll notice as soon as I do that, I'm seeing a list of groups that I'm part of as soon as I do that. So then I can go over to this one little title that I have change that from classification to description there we go and there are my group names there that i'm part of in my case all right so now now that we have that how can we use that to essentially limit the box limit what i'm seeing right here uh, i don't want to show you this box unless you're part of that power bi consumer group well first of all let's just so we can kind of visualize this let's filter this just to the group we care about so oh, let's, let's first of all see the, um, as I kind of scroll into this, there we go. Okay, perfect. So as we go into this, we can go in and actually see, uh, look up the ID, the ID right here. I would base it on the ID. You could also base it on the display name as well if you wanted to. But I'm gonna base mine on the ID here. So get that ID, I'll go back over here again. I'll copy my object ID right there, and then go back to Power Apps. Now I'll go and filter this, do a comma, and ID is equal to, oop, ID is equal to, and there we go. And we should now just see the one group back. There it is, Power BI Consumer Group. Perfect. So now that we've got that, we now want to put that into a variable saying, are you a consumer or are you not a consumer? Are you an admin or are you not an admin? And those kind of things. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take the code we've already written. And I'm going to go into the app on start of this application. So I hit the app one right here. This is where I'm kind of initializing some variables. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, I'll paste in my code. 
I'll do a new variable here, call it var, I'll call it like is admin or something like that. Is admin consumer, whatever you want to call it. Then I'll hit a comma. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say is blank or is empty, excuse me. So is there a record back from that? So right now it's gonna return a true if there's a record and false if there's not a record. Sorry, opposite of that. It's gonna to return a false if I have a hit, if I do not have a hit, or if I have a hit, excuse me, and not if I do. So I want to do the inverse of that. In other words, if there's a record there, I want to show true. If there's not a record, I want to show false. All right, so now if I go and just drop a quick label in, just so we can kind of see the result of that and debug it this way, I'll call var is, all right, somewhere in here is my, okay, it's not showing itself. The way we can debug that is go to view and variables. I think I made a mistake. Uh, yep, I made a mistake by not having a comma there likely. There we go. Oh, no, I got a comma set. All right, let's so check my open parentheses. One, two, three. And I've got, oh, there's my problem. I'm missing one closed parenthesis right there. All right, cool. All right, now that I've done that, I should now be able to see that variable and var is, and there it is. We can see right now it's at the fault, but I haven't run the code yet. I haven't actually run this by going run on start, and now it flips to true. Okay, so now I just wanna hide this button. Pretty easy in this case. One option is we could do the visible property. I could say var is admin as that property and it only shows up if I'm part of that, that group. Or if I wanna disable that, set that to true, I can go to the display mode property. Okay, display mode, there it is. And I can do something like, hey, if var is admin, comma, then I'll do display mode dot edit, otherwise display mode dot disabled. Now this essentially is going to disable the button if I'm not part of that. And this is not actually a button, this is, well this is a button, excuse me. So this is going to disable that icon right there looks like, oh, did I do the button? Yeah, there we go. So it's gonna, it's gonna disable that if I'm part of an admin group. So let's, let's give this a shot. Let me go ahead and uh, remove myself from this group by going to members and I will remove myself now. There we go. And let's go ahead and run this app on start again. And you'll notice now it kind of grays out and I cannot click on it anymore. By adding myself back, there we go. Going back here again, immediately if I run that app on start again, it now shows up. So it's that easy to basically turn on or off permissions based on certain groups inside of Office 365. This also applies to things like Teams memberships as well. All right, hope you enjoyed this, this uh, quick video on how to make this security uh, reliable on, reliant on a certain group inside of Office 365. We also have one on, a, uh, on Azure AD in, a pre, in our playlist as well, in case you want to use the Azure AD function instead. Uh, this is part of our training we do at PragmaticWorks at .com. We have hackathons that we do. We teach you how to build apps with your own business problems. And we also do boot camps as well and other types of trainings. Well, thank you so much for watching this video today, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.